Hello and welcome to another Blender Know How tutorial. In this video, we're going to be taking a cube and we're going to slice it this time. So we've uh, we've done some explosions in the past, but we're going to take this one and we're going to slice it. Uh, some really cool things you can do with this is you can maybe slice some cheese or, I don't know, slice something else. This could be more than just a cube, so it could be a car or whatever. You can do some cool effects here. So this is what it's going to look like, and I'm just going to go open up Blender here. This is our scene that we're going to be kind of creating, or at least this section of it. And as you can see, as it plays, there's a little bit of physics in here, and the slices are going to fall as if they were sliced this way. So that's what we're looking for. That's where we're going. Okay, cool. So I'm going to brand new Blender scene, and I'm going to turn on my screencast keys, just so you can see down here what keys I'm pressing. So. Uh, yeah, let's. Uh, this is the cube we're going to be slicing. So I'm going to hit one on the numpad to go to the front, and I'm going to hit Shift A, add mesh, and we can either do a plane or a cube. I'm going to do a cube. Go into edit mode, and I'm going to make it really skinny. This needs to be like really skinny, something like that. And then I'm going to make it long this way. So I'm hitting the S key to do these. Um, operations and I need to make it a little bit thicker that way. So that's what we're looking for here. Now for this effect to be pulled off correctly we need this origin point to be all the way over here on this end. So to do this I'm going to take my object and I'm going to move it right here somewhere in there. It can be at the end. Actually yeah, I'll put it at the end. So you can see that that's where it's at. Now I'm going to hit tab, go back into object mode, and I'm going to move it right over here. Um, yeah, something like that. I'm going to move it down here. So this is going to be one object that we're going to cut multiple times here. So I'm going to take the array now. I'm going to add an array. And you can see that we've added, we can add as many as we want. I'm going to add like 15 or maybe even 20. Okay. And it just makes this huge line. And that's not exactly what we want. So to change that, let's take off relative offset. And we're going to turn on object offset. Now what are we going to rotate it around? Well, let's add something. Let's add an empty plane axis, axi. And I'm going to move it down here and over here. And in fact, I can just grab it and move it near where the origin was for this. So you can click on this object and it's right there. We want the origin of that to be really similar to that. Okay, cool. So now when we click back on our slicing object, we can click on our eyedropper and click on the empty. If we go to the empty and hit R, we can now rotate that. This is really cool and can be used in a lot of different ways. So have some fun with this. Uh, I'm going to do something like that. So I just made a whole bunch of slices. And now let's add some, let's actually do the slicing and then add some physics. It's going to be pretty cool. So take your cube, add modifier, make a boolean, and hit the eyedropper and click the slicing object. Okay, cool. So now we can just hide the empty and the slicing object and click on our boolean, or our sliced up cube. Go in, uh, hit apply, and tab, hit P. And by loose parts. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to hit tab, go back into object mode, and each one of these should be its own object now. And it sure looks like it is. So I'm going to hit shift A, add a mesh, a plane, move it down here near the, bo near the bottom. This is going to be the object that all of these are going to collide with here at the bottom. This is like our floor. So I'm going to hit S, scale that bad boy up, something like that, enough that it can slide out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to click on one of these. Actually, let's select all of them. Go into the physics tab and hit rigid body. Uh, so right now, if I hit play, only one of them actually moves. And that's because you can see which one is actually active. This is our active selection. What we want to do is we want to copy it to all of these. So I'm going to go up here to object and click, uh, not quick effects. Um, I just based right there, rigid body, and click copy from active. So now if we hit space, they all fall, and that's what we want. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, click on the plane, 
and hit rigid body and make this passive. Passive will make it so that physics objects can act on it, but this won't really affect be affected by things like gravity. So now if we hit play, we're, we're looking pretty good. Now there's a couple uh, issues here with the ground plane. I'm not going to go into it significantly, but there are some things that you can do to fix this. And you'll just have to kind of play around with it. Because I don't want this to be like a, a physics tutorial. Um, however, this is maybe a little relevant. So if we come in here, there's a couple things we can do. We can go to surface or sensitivity and turn on collision margin. And you can increase this. If we change this to like 0.1, we're already going to see a big difference. So if I go up here to object, rigid body, and copy from active and play this, it's going to, it's going to be explosive because the collisions are so large. So you got to be careful with this setting. Uh, it should be, I think it's like 0.4 we can try. I'm going to go to object and click on rigid bodies, copy from active. Still explosive. However, our collisions with the ground plane are looking more natural. So we're getting somewhere we want to be. I'm going to try maybe 0 0.01 and apply that. And that's looking pretty good to me. So uh, yeah, that's, that's where I'm going to end the tutorial. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them down in the comments. Hopefully I can ask if, or I can answer them. If I can't answer them, there's a whole community of people that I'm sure would be able to do that and would be willing to. Uh, Blender's an awesome, uh, not just software, but community. I, I, I think that that would be appropriate. Also, if you like this, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It, it helps. We'll see you next time on Blender Know How.